Okay, welcome to another one of our Zoom COVID-19 weekly seminars, kata seminars. Tonight's kata is kankudai. Okay. And kankudai is a, a long kata. It's uh, characterized by a lot of movements in a lot of different directions very quickly. And, uh, but the kata is pretty basic movements. And one of the more noteworthy things about it is that it, it is the, a lot of the Heian Kata movements are obviously derived from this Kata, taken directly from Kankudai, probably more so than any of the other Kata uh, is purported to be, since it's Koshi's favorite Kata. So it's special in that way also. So we'll, let's start by doing the Kata together, and then I'll get down to the analysis. Kankudai! Each. Ni. Sun. Chi. Wo. Rok. Each. Chi. Go. Each. Ni. Sun. Chi. Purpose of this is to make you relax, 
the, the center of gravity drop and uh, prepare, you, prepare you for battle to relax your brain so you can concentrate. Uh, so, in this spirit, when you do this movement, please think of that, that way, that you're taking the biggest cleansing breath that you can possibly take and the biggest let all the air out, out breath. Now mentally prepared to take on the pony. Next move, uh, two movements. First one, Jodan block. And uh, this one should be a little bit, uh, Gaydan is a, this retraction arm is down, Chudan is level, horizontal, Jodan, it should be a little bit up. Okay, and this first move, you must drop straight to the floor. Don't transfer your weight. Similar to uh, all of our hand two through five, the first movement. Then the second move, you have to make it weight transfer. So the important thing about the second move is to transfer the weight. And these two movements are done after are done pum pum very quick. One, two. So to do that, you have to make sure that your hands don't have any back motion. Just go like that, and then go like that. Don't swing back or make any back motion. Just go directly to the block. Okay, we're here. Next one. Tate vertical knife hand. I said in, uh, in, in Basaidai last week, because we're coming from this position, this one means sliding inside the arm and kind of pushing forward with this part of the hand. Sliding in. But Kankudai comes from your, your stance is shifting. So this one, your, the opponent's coming in here, and when you move to the side, it, this is more natural that you would come around with Tate Shutoke instead of in. Understand? Because you're coming from here as you, as you go. The opponent's original line of attack was over here somewhere. So you're kind of keeping him to that side. From here, next, next set, just like Basaidai. Straight punch. Uchiuke. Straight punch. Uchiuke. Repeating what I said was important last week is that you turn on the, on the heels of the feet so that your, your center of gravity is shifting. If you turn on the balls of the feet, your center of gravity will stay in the same spot. But you should, if somebody had a spear and was poking right down the middle, when you go like this, it should go by behind you. And you come up, another poking spear down the middle, you should, it should go by. So have somebody practice, take the shin and practice poking at your stomach as you make those moves. You have to turn on your heel to make this, your weight shift this way and then this way. Okay. But uh, it's the exact same as what I did. Hey, okay, next, you're a really small stance, but there's an adjustment step because such a small stance is very small. Then, just like Keanida, the text, the manual, current manual, says just like Keanida, this is a simultaneous. Strike to the temple and to the ribs. Uh, and I suggested that uh, if you did the Anita, go ahead and try it. I've never seen anybody demonstrate this. At least my legs are too long to make, to make this kick in that amount of space, which is where the opponent would be. So the boom kind of more typically, you see, is block a lunge punch to Jodan with the back fist, either to the wrist or the elbow, and then hit either to the ribs or to the armpit, okay? And as I said for Hamnida, after you finish this move, if you, when you go like this, you will find yourself right up against this opponent. So this one is, can be an elbow strike. 
That's my idea. That's not in any book. But if you practice with a partner, you'll be, when you turn and step back, you'll, that's where you'll be. Okay, then, just like here, Anita. Knife hand block, knife hand block, and Kiai uh, Nuki takes strike. Again, what I, what I said for Hanida, make sure that this elbow doesn't pivot up. This elbow is your pivot point. You must stay in the same spot. Okay, and the hand, the striking hand, passes top, over the top this way, and then turns here. Okay. If I make a capital A, you'll notice that the blocking arm is not centered. So you're not pushing the punch to center down with the elbow pointed outward. Rather you're pushing it a little bit off to the side, which makes more self-defense sense because it's making an arc from center to slightly off the right side. So check that in uh, this kata and and you done. Make sure that you understand and that it's not here. It's exactly where it is in the kata. Okay, from here. Next one. Get him right, open hand. This hand is just getting ready. Then Agiruke, open hand. And this one is Moashi Shuto Uchi, striking to the temple. What they want in the execution of this is, is they want this hand to come across the brow as if you're wiping the sweat off your forehead with the back of your hand to this position. Okay, and then, then make the strike. Since it clearly says in the book it has no, this move, this part of the move has no meaning, this is you're just winding up for the strike. I'm not sure why they want so much Uh, why not just come to here? I'm not sure. This would infer that this was like Nagashi Uke or something, but they say no, it doesn't mean it. But that's what they want. So you come to here, come across your brow, block behind, pivot and go. This one, by the way, a lot of people, including myself, if I'm not paying attention, make sure that this one comes to center. So you're not blocking like with your hands, just blocking with your wrist. Okay. Regular rising block. Okay, next, my hair, regular. Then reach behind. And this is a gain of right. And the Joran Uchiuke. So although sometimes I like to I like to think maybe I'm grabbing the somebody's kick and pulling it out. The, the meaning is maybe somebody is attacking from in front and behind at the same time. Geda, Jogoda. Okay, next one is Nagashi Uke, sweeping block, and Shuto Uchikomi, strike. Okay, so they've, they've all these that in the, in the old, old videos, and so they more work just reaching for something. This one, you're supposed to strike and I said, target comes to mind is inside the groin. Strike, this one is pause and slow. Pause, slow. This one is just, come on, uh, Renoji Dachi. Renoji Dachi, your back foot is 45 degrees and your front foot, the toes are turned in a little bit. It's kind of like a tiny front stance. I, I was just going to say that I like to think of, to make distinguish from Kangu Dai Kangu, and Kangu Show. In Kangu Show, a person grabbing our wrist of this, of this forward hand and we break like almost like hand show them and then we wrap them in the top of the hand with our knuckles. In Kangu Dai, if they grab the wrist of our forward hand, now Gaydon Barai would break the, the grip. But that's not what, that's, they just say come on, just get ready. But the application, 
after here can be the same as AM5, meaning pull the leg up, push the opponent over your front knee, then stand up and watch to see what he'll do next. Okay, from here, ready. Next one, you go directly to here. This one's already in the down block position. So you go directly to, directly to here, this hand stays still, and again, make to make it here. Then again, repeat, this set of moves to here. Okay. Then, we're at hey, on four, getting ready. Strike and elbow strike. Unlike hand four, we don't take an adjustment step for this next movement. Okay, this adjustment step, since the opponent is coming down this line, if, if I take an adjustment step, I'm just moving closer to the opponent. If I don't, it just means the opponent's coming in deeper. So I, that adjustment step in hand four isn't changing the line of attack, which is more common. The common reason for adjustment step is to get your body, center of gravity on, on the line of their attack. This one, it does, it's not, not important, only important to distancing. Okay, I said before, in, uh, interestingly in the text, they call this my empty uchi. But they say your right fist is against your left nipple. So, and in uh, hand four, they call it marshi. At the Uchi. It's, a, but it's the same move, so I, I don't know. I don't know why the difference. Mistake? I don't know. There are some mistakes in the text. Spelling, anyway. The important thing is your hip is Yaku Hamni, more than around, your elbow is advanced from your fist, and you have to pull, pull into your elbow this hand, but you and your students, don't slap your elbow too much. Of course, your hand's moving in. But get yourself so you can make the strike be the major part of the movement. Some people are just doing this, and this one's very sluggish. And I said before, for hand four, this, this elbow strike comes off the elbow, brushes the hip, the, the love handles, and comes like this. There's no outside motion of the elbow. If the elbow comes outside, you can't use your hip to make the strike anymore. You're just using your shoulders. You are in the majority, but your technique will be weaker. So learn how to get power from the hip, from turning the hip. Next, sequence from hand on and hand shoulder for knife hand blocks. What I emphasized during those seminars is, is that even, of course, all the beginners, but even some black belts are really dogging these movements because they're not taking the, the, uh, the idea of how, how to move into account. The first one is you can't move your arms first. Your arms move as you start to step. So if anything, you have to think about stepping first. Second is, there's no, there's no pause in the feet move. The feet have to go from one spot to the next. Boom! Just like that. They cannot go slow, fast, or change the speed. So you just bump full speed. And you have to practice all of those kinds of movements with no hands. So you can get the idea, how does my foot get from point A to point B as quick as possible. Then second, or last, the hip snaps at the end with the, with the uh, up, outward stroke of the block. The hip snaps at the end of the movement. So feet, if anything, everything starts at the same time, but if anything, to fix the one-two idea, one-two timing. Feet go first, and they go as fast as they possibly can. The hands try to keep up. That should be your feeling to make those movements quick. This kind of uh, 
black belt mindset, it applies to a lot of movements in the advanced guard. How to, how to move different than you did 15 years ago. Kind of graduating. Okay, we're here. Then, we're back to this same movement. Wiping the sweat off our brow. Striking to tempo. Next move, my theory, and Tate Urakenuchi, meaning vertical, vertical back fist strike. And all of these vertical back fist strikes resist practice hitting a, a vertical surface so that your energy is going that way. Don't let yourself or any of your students start coming down with this. You, your strike will come down if your elbow rises too much or if you just un unbend the elbow too much. To be a vertical strike, you have to come up to the vertical plane and then so that your elbow, at some point your elbow and wrist are lined up on the vertical plane. Then you make the downstroke. Usually this is done in one, one scooping move. Some people come across the opposite shoulder to come center. Some people come almost right up the middle. But you can never come from your, like in this case, my right shoulder. Because your elbow is not centered. So if you come off the right shoulder, you cannot make the move correctly. Uh, vertical. Okay, next move, which you get, and the uh, double punch. Okay, next move. This one is Jodan Urizuki, and this one simultaneously means you are kicking or knee kneeing the opponent. Okay, so they both they both come together. Your hip must be well forward to make this movement. The mistake that a lot of people make is that they, a lot of people do something like this. They'll extend punch and then come back a little bit with it. This is, has two problems. One, if you extend the punch, this won't hit anything. If the punch hits something first, because it's too far away. But two, your whole body is moving to the target. Boom! If I continue punching, boom, then my body movement has stopped. But my arm's still moving. That's a weak technique. So it should be body, body and arm stop at the same time. And some people are a little bit farther out. <coughs> but the classic position is the same as the, uh, the back fist strike here. In this outside block. Next, drop, drop to the floor or low with your back foot flat or at least not heel up, flat on the inside edge of the foot. Your fingers turn inward and you're looking ahead about 12 feet on, on the ground. And a lot of people are trying to stick their butt out. You really have to bend the front knee and uh, let the hip go down to make this move. Next move, don't stand up and then block. This move is blocking from here. And then just pin. Okay, so this next move, a lot of people do really low. I can't do it that low, but you have to start the move from low. If it comes up a little bit, okay, but as you're blocking, but you cannot stand and then block, which is what most people do. Okay. Moi uh, Sensei, like his bunkai, he liked for this was when you, somebody's maybe swinging a stick, so he went to the floor. This opponent, you can grab his front leg and pull it out before you block to the rear. Okay. And it's very easy to get leverage. Uh, on the opponent if you're down that low. Okay, from the, from the low, low uh, gate on, super okay. 
this hand is low, like I said. Center, higher, center, down here. Another. Shoot, okay. Okay, next. Turning. Turning, Uchuke. And this, this is an example of uh, uh, you re really, really make sure that that your weight and the hip snap happen, weight shift and hip snap happen at the same time. Okay, a lot of people with movements like this, they turn and then they block. But everything, the turn, the foot shoots out, the turn happens at the end, and so does the block. So, you got to get this, always have this in mind. The hips got to turn at the end of the movement, not, not turn and then block feeling. That's very slow. Okay, punch, then the other way, and double punch. Next, again we have this move. But this time, we don't take an adjustment step. Now, this one is very curious to me, because in the old days we did take an adjustment step, just like the other ones. And now, the opponent should be coming down this line, but we're not taking an adjustment step. So somehow we got over to the side. Uh, because it used to be a half step, and somehow got changed to no step. I'm wondering if this is one of these uh, places where they kind of had to cheat to make sure that they got the kata to go back to the mark. Uh, you can practice it with adjustment step and without and see if it makes any difference for you, but, but it doesn't make any sense to me that it doesn't happen. And yet this one, this one with a really short stance where it almost makes no difference. The first one has an adjustment step. So, uh, my thought there is that, uh, I may have said this in one of my other seminars, they changed the movements quite a bit from the original Okinawan versions of these kata. In doing so, if they ever started in the same spot, it's very likely that they no longer would start in the end at the same spot they started, unless they did added something else to get back there. Second one, it's reported, if you want to uh, believe tales, that Sensei Funakoshi is the one who thought it was so important that all the kata started and stopped at the same point. And he insisted that they all be that way, uh, feeling of uh, Zanshin, beginning and the same. Also, if you have a class of students, they all come back to the same spot. There's no adjustment before the second rep. It all makes sense. Uh, but it, there's no reason to believe that the original versions of Gata all ended where they started. So we are here. Next we have same kind of uh, block block and the uh, nukite attack, followed by the opposite of handsanda. We come to here slowly, and then to vertical back fist strike quickly. The, in this case, in handsanda, they're turning the wrist to the inside, trying to make you go here. In this kata, they're turning your wrist to the outside with two hands, and they want to make you go like this. Well, you don't want to be that way. So, two things you have to do. First, you have to bring, never, never uh, lose the integrity of the wrist. Your forearm will lose power if you let them bend your wrist. They want to bend your wrist. Don't let them. Keep it straight. Bring your elbow into your body, and bring your palm to your shoulder. Okay. But, we're not actually bringing our arm in because our arm, if it's getting twisted, it's too weak to do that. We're moving our body as they twist to the hand. So the hand stays and the body moves to the hand. That's the essence of that movement. 
you need to be here to, for leverage so they can't get you here. Okay. And some people, other styles, maybe go like this and then do this. Well, they're, they're putting themselves in more trouble. If you can still do the counter, all power to you. So we're here, slow, fast. Again, vertical back fist strike, ending in the same position as outside block, just a little higher. Then, Kensui, Mwashi Uchi, bottom fist strike with Noriyashi, shift. Then we're in a Teki Shodan sequence. My MP, Kamai, Gidon Barai. Next, this one is called Zen One Gidon Uke. Zen One is this part of the arm. Good. It starts, starts up high and comes down to here. Up high, elbow almost straight, make a big sweep to here. This one comes to the side and is getting ready, it has no meaning. Uh, let's do this one first. This one, in the old days, they had their hand closer. Old videos, they had their hand closer to their head usually. The way the tournament people, and there are so many kangudais of the Japanese on YouTube, that you can look at them all yourself. They're all over the place exactly where they're placing this arm. Some are this way, and some are, are pulled, are rotated back. But they're always usually out here somewhere. Not, not like I said, the old days they're more like this. So, yeah, the old days everybody was a little tighter in here. But I'm sure a, a lot of you oldsters Remember that we were taught to, this was Agiyuki effectively. Okay? And I think that's what Sensei Mori taught us. Nobody ever that I can find did it that way. Nobody ever did anything that looked like Agiyuki. So I don't know where that came from. In the old videos, they're in tight. Newer version is here. Best karate is here with the palm facing, uh, the back hand of the hand facing sideways. Okay, but this is, there's still a lot of variation. I got a feeling though, that if you're getting ready to punch, because you're not spending a lot of time there, that it's probably not super important exactly where that hand is. Because it says in the book, it has no particular meaning. Cool. So if it has no particular meaning, you probably have a little more license where you want to put it to make this feel comfortable. Uh, the other hand, in the book, it's clear, in best graphic clear, that they want your wrist straight. But most competitors bend the elbow a little bit. And this, if this is blocking a kick, I can see how the meaning, if you, if you do this, Zen one uke, pam, the leg's gonna fly off to the side. And it'll work just fine, but what's this one doing? So I can see how they want to uh, have a scooping feeling. Okay, but it's not the sekui uke, it's, it's geran uke. Okay, the scooping block. It's not called a scooping block in the text. So my other observation is. From my tournament years, I know how hard it is to, to catch the front kick and get, get it to here before you, without getting kicked in the ribs yourself. From facing full front to the opponent, you'd have to be way over here. That's, a, in my mind, a very dangerous move if the front kick's coming, coming this way. Very dangerous move. Okay, so. I've seen the people do bunkai, and that's what they're doing, kind of scooping the kick, but if that kick comes deep, you may, it may still just go right into you. Okay. And then 
punchy. When you see bunkai, when you scoop the leg, this one, the leg's on top of my arm, the bunkai is always here, where the leg is. But the cut is underneath. And the reason it's underneath is because then you don't have to adjust it. It's front where it should be in this movement. This is what it says in the book, the meaning of this movement. All right, the meaning is this opponent just kicked with the left leg, so I'm kick blocking to the outs inside of his kick. Okay, and his leg pushed his leg to the outside. Then he kicks with the back leg, the right leg, and I hook under the right leg and bring his leg to here and then strike it. So it's the same opponent kicking twice and he's kicking from the side. Everybody understand that? So I block from I block from here. He kicks once, he kicks with the right leg, the out, outside of the leg, farther from the camera. As he comes in, I scoop the leg. Now I don't need my, my wrist to bend. If he's because this is like laying across my arm. Now it would stay there a while for me to strike. So you don't really need to hook it. And uh, so the book is Kapasmari the Bunkai, maybe. Might be a little hard uh, to execute it. You'll have to try it. Okay, it's important to uh, understand that technique because it is unique to the cut. From here, what? This one actually pauses a little. Huh? Then this one, pom pom, is very quick. Okay, so it's a little bit dramatic. Wham, and pom pom. This stance, a chichi dachi, is a little wider than normal. Okay, I don't, I don't know why. Maybe it's just keep your center of gravity more low. Okay, this goes so okay. The open hand. Then, next the movement. We come to here, one count, and to pull down the second count. You have to turn around completely, then start to pull down. Which, in the bunkai, yes, that makes sense, except that in the, the bunkai, you don't make the right angle turn. In the bunkai, if you have his right arm between your arms, you grab his wrist, and you step into the opponent, and pull his elbow down over your shoulder. You just step into the opponent to make the bunkai. So you're actually, so they want the feeling, they want the feeling, you cannot pull down until you've made the step into the opponent, then you can pull down. So they want that feeling, but you're turning a completely different direction, I guess, to uh, satisfy the symmetry of the cut. Anyway, they want two counts. Then, knee down to my ear. First one, don't move the arms in the air. Second one, then come directly from here to top the work. The, the key to making the double kick is not jumping high. You do have to go pretty far to get back to your mark, but the key is not necessarily jumping high. The key is having very relaxed knees so that you can go padump very quickly. Um, this was demonstrated to me at summer camp many years ago by Sensei Kawada. He just stood like this, and I'm not going to demonstrate it, but basically he went, his, his kick went left or right, and then his feet were on the floor, but his head never moved. He just went, Doop, and his feet were down. So he's demonstrating, you don't have to jump, you just have to have uh, relaxed knees. Snapping knees. That's the trick. That's the key. This knee down my area can be very effective. Surprise the opponent. I have personal experience in that. I got I got lost a, a tournament match because my opponent used this kick on me and he got me. You know, it, because when it starts, your brain goes, well, "What the heck is he doing?" And then boom, it's too late if you're not ready for something like that. Okay, last movement. 
The important point here is as you start to move, don't make, a, don't make an extra motion just like bus I die. Just, just come down and naturally come to here. So you want to finish your, finish your swing. And, and this isn't net, it could be a block, but it isn't necessarily a block. Finish your swing while your weight's still low, not making a stance, just keeping your weight low. And uh, then natural cross the arms like hand cut. This move has evolved. Uh, in the old video, it's clear they were all coming to front. Okay? And somewhere, somewhere, 20 years ago or so, people started doing this to the side. They were doing it here, to the side, and then just turning around and standing up. But now everybody's doing it to the front again. Well, I shouldn't say everyone. There's variation in exactly the arc that they're doing in, in the competitors. So I'm wondering how strict the teachers are with the, the uh, teaching the course of this motion. Maybe it's not that important. Okay, but important is it, it, there's no stop. It doesn't stop and then you go like this. It's one motion. Okay. I forgot to say, we're almost done. The begin the first movement, uh, Yoy, ready? In the old days, it goes like this and then like this, okay? Except not everybody in the old days. In the text it says, bring your fingertips together. So I, I was taking a poll amongst the, the world champion players, only the Japanese. A few are doing this, a few do this, a few do this, I know. And some do this. And some do this. They, they have various uh, superfluous differences in the way they do it. But the book just says, to bring your fingertips together. Right thumbs uh, slightly over left. And uh, the text comment says, some of how much overlap you has, have has to do with the uh, size of your hands and length of your fingers. So it's, the important thing is that you're not, your wrists aren't so bent, that your wrists are, are more in a relaxed position. 